Hello all, my name is Krish Nayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, I'm going to discuss about how do you derive your key performance indicators in a data analyst project. The reason why I'm uploading this particular video because uh, in one of the recent interviews from one of my subscriber and a student, uh, he was asked this two specific question, how do you derive key performance indicators? And the second one was, which was a follow up, he got a specific FinTech data set and he was given time to 30 to 45 minutes. And then in that specific time, they told him to come up with some amazing key performance indicators. And he exceptionally performed well. I had a talk to him and what all steps he basically used, what the interviewer were actually looking at. That same thing, the entire thing I'll be explaining in this specific video, right? So please make sure that you watch this video till the end because this will definitely be helpful for both programming, non-programming, non-technical people also because non-programming and non-technical, they also have a lot of domain knowledge, right? So deriving key performance indicators, I would suggest to follow four important steps. The first step is define the key business goal, okay? Here, I'll also be considering a very good example so that you will be able to understand each and every step. Let's say that you're working an e-commerce website or company like Amazon, okay? Let's say Amazon has actually started this big billion day sale. I hope you have heard of it. Let's say that in the last year, it was able to earn X dollars. And this year, they also again want to come up with a big billion day sale. And their main target is to increase the sale revenue when compared to the previous year, right? So here, precisely, you know the business goal, which will definitely help you to come up with some plan, right? Your business goal is to basically increase the revenue of the entire sale. So now once you are good with the with respect to the goal, now let's go to the second step. The second step is defining our key visuals. Now why I'm saying this key visuals, let's say. Now in order to achieve that goal, right? Sales revenue goal, what all things you may be dependent on with respect to this particular use case. You, let's say that you have defined some successes right some some key parameters let's say the first parameter is that let's say that you want to focus more on the leads how do you increase the revenue definitely you want more leads to come and visit your website right so this is one step leads can come through various ways through email marketing through organic marketing through inorganic marketing through various ways through advertisements so every key parameters that are involved in that you will try to use it together to come up with some key visuals, right? So here, what you're doing is that you're specifically choosing the entire, from the entire data set, you're dividing task and subtasks, which will lead to basically achieve the goal that you're looking for, right? The second, the second key visual, second key parameter can be something else. Let's say that uh, you, your e-commerce website is selling one specific product in, tremendously and it is performing well in the market. Every frequently you are basically getting that particular sale and you're able to sell that particular product. So for that particular product, what you can do is that you can apply a discount coupon and you can give them and you can basically say that this is probably the most popular product that is available right now in Amazon and you can open that as an offer. So this can be the second key visual, right? So like this, you really need to define and predefine your task and subtask and group them together. Right. So this this all are your key parameters that you can basically use. Right. So I hope everybody has understood about your uh, second step that is defining our key visuals. Key visual basically means that you're just considering that which all parameters you're basically key parameters you're going to use. And you're thinking of a visualization diagram for that so that you can use it anywhere in your uh, business intelligence too. Right. Now coming to the third step. Your third step is also very much important. That is determining the measurements. Now, in this specific step, let's say that once you perform the data pre-processing, right? In Power BI and Tableau, you may have probably seen, right? As an example, when I told you in the second step, you define your key parameters. Let's say in the third step, when I talk about measurements, right? So one example can be that. What is the, like, how, how much time a person is spending in your e-commerce website? What is the kind of products they are looking at? So this can be one, one measurement parameter, the length of the time that is basically browsing your website, right? 
What is the average duration the person is spending in your website? This can be another thing. What is the average duration with respect to different, different products the person is spending in your website, right? So this can be some key measurements that can be used with respect to this specific use case. One amazing thing about Power BI and Tableau, after you do the data pre-processing, and you probably convert your parameters into date time, you, you convert your parameter into decimal numbers, numerical variables and all. And once you come to the visualization part, you will be able to see in the right hand side, all the features which are numerical. Mostly for the numerical features, it considers them as measurement. Now, whenever a numerical feature is there, some of the measurement functionalities like aggregate functions, like mean, median, mode, right? What is the minimum? What is the max value? right? What is the average value that all functionalities will be directly available in your Power BI, right? Through that, you will be able to create some amazing graphs, right? So if I talk one example with respect to the products, how, what is the average duration the person is spending in your website, right? How many number of clicks is basically doing in with respect to different, different products. So this kind of measurements can be combined together and it will support the second step which is basically defining your visual keys. So here, now you will be able to create five to 10 different, different graphs, visual graphs, which will be supporting your second point. And this measurement is pretty much important because this measurement will lead to the main thing that is finalizing your goal and helping your stakeholders to take the next step, next action steps, right? Now coming to the fourth and the final point, that is finalizing your KPIs. Now, finalizing your KPIs is very much simple, guys. Let's say that I am putting a very generic statement saying that I want to, let's say that increasing the sales revenue by 20% from the past big billion day sales. So that will be my main title, right? Now, internally, I will have many graphs that will support that. Let's say the average duration that is used, average products, which is the most popular product that is sold, you know, the discount coupons that is getting applied frequently, the affiliate links that has been created, who is the most popular a person who is doing this affiliate part also. So all those things will be done. And based on that, they will decide that what kind of offers they should open and give it to the users so that the sales revenue will increase. So this is the steps that was actually followed by that guy also who had actually attended the interview and he exceptionally performed well and he was able to get some amazing things from that. Finally, he got an offer and he did absolutely well, right? So I hope you like this particular video. Also, please make sure that you use these steps. Again, don't copy and paste from a generic sales KPI, e-commerce KPI or finance KPI, right? Start thinking. Start with defining your key business goal, define your key visuals. Again, this terminologies can be changed by anyone that is. Then determining the measurements and finally finalizing your KPIs. So this was it from my side. I hope you like this particular video. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you one all. Bye-bye.